Hello everyone and welcome to another video. A few videos ago we took a look at this, the Model 1852 Dutch Infantry Officers Sabre. And while there are some open points still, at least as far as I'm concerned, I still haven't figured out whether this is brass. Uh, it is a very pale brass or a very yellow looking German silver, so it kind of falls somewhere in between. I had mentioned that the sword, I think, potentially may be one of those easy kinds of swords to disassemble. And a closer look confirms that it indeed is the case. You can even see the signs um, of where tools were used to, to tighten or loosen this pommel ball here. So today we're going to do basically that. We're going to disassemble it, especially because apart from the brass, there are a couple of things that I'm still curious about regarding this sword. So the blade has some residue of some silvery or chrome color. I'm not sure if that's a plating or if it's, a, well, we'll see it in detail in just a second. But what I'd like to understand hopefully is if this blade was somehow plated in some way or not. And then as usual, we're hunting for any maker's marks or anything on the tang. So we'll get right into it and take a look. Okay, so these disassembling videos are always really exciting for me, so, and I hope they are for you. The only tools we're gonna need here is are a, well, some kind of a plier or a wrench or something that you can use to mm, hold on to the button here and a buffer material to avoid damaging it. So I know in some cases, some people actually use brass wrenches or brass pliers, because obviously brass on brass won't damage the sword, but I don't have that, so we're going to make do with some leather. Now, the first thing I wanna show you here is actually, and this may be a sign when you're uh, investigating your own swords, that I hadn't noticed initially, but obviously once you see it, it makes perfect sense, are these um, scuffs here, these lines, these are obviously from a tool that's been used to twist or yeah, to tighten or loosen that button. So if you see this kind of thing on a pommel, it very well may be that it's a, well, I mean, obviously the, the dead giveaway is that you don't see the pin. That's usually the case. Um, let's start, let me see if I can film this easily. Uh, okay, I have a pretty firm grip on the button here, so I'll start loosening it while also trying to film, so excuse me if it's not perfect. And I feel it getting loose, so I think we can already now um, remove it by hand. Let's get back in focus. And yes, it's still a little, okay, there we go. So this unscrews fairly simply. You also have to be careful with these threaded brass pieces because as the tang is made of steel, it, you can easily over tighten uh, the brass and ruin the thread, uh, the thread, the end thread here. So we'll put that little button there for the moment. And this comes off quite sim easily. It's very similar to the IOD-89 in that sense. So it's just a slip on cap. We can see inside. Inside there's not much, but maybe you can see here um, the some casting imprecision there. Um, yeah, you can see some gaps in the, it's not a full solid, uh, let's see, if, yeah, you see there on this side here, it's not a beautiful cast, that's for sure. And I can't seem to get it in focus for some reason, but let's move on to the rest of the sword. The grip hopefully comes off with more ease than the IOD-89, so, oh, excuse me for my horrible hand, I burnt it cooking. I got some boiling oil on it, so I'll try not to not to focus on it too much. And we might, ah, there we go. And it did come off. So 
this slips off. Let's take a look at it as well. Also, this fell off. What is it? Nothing, just a little speck of dirt. So, yeah, we have, it's always very interesting to see how the metal wire is fixed in place. So in this case, you see there's this little groove and the last wind of the metal wire is pushed into the groove and down against the wood, sorry, against the bone here. Ah, horn. And then obviously it's all kept in place by the tang. Once that goes in and fills the void, the metal wire will not move. Um, we can see here the rough work on the horn grip. And in this case, the end of the wire goes through a hole. So they drilled a hole down uh, hidden from the hidden by the cap here, so you don't see it when the sword is assembled. And yeah, but I think we all want to see the blade rather than the... So one interesting thing, which actually now I have confirmation about, well, let's, uh, I already see some interesting stuff there, but one thing here is the uh, one piece guard. And it seems to me, yes, there is a number here. So there is a three or a five. I'm not 100% sure. It kind of looks like a three to me, but it may be a five. Um, so yeah, we have some number there. For some reason, focus today is not my friend. There we go. This is obviously great if you want to clean these swords because lots of times this kind of section, the grip, which has a lot of decoration and small details, fine details, can be really hard to clean when the sword is assembled. So it's kind of a bit of a godsend that this one comes apart because it'll be easier to clean. I don't see any other marks, but let's do a final check here. No, it seems like that was it. So one of the reasons why I thought it would be interesting to take this apart is that you can see the blade has this kind of residue of what I wasn't sure was plating, and you can actually see it all the way up the blade. You can see it even here towards the tip. There's this silvery metal colored sections, and these are not steel color per se, they feel more like the residue of a plating, I thought. Or I also thought someone may have painted the blade at some point. So I wasn't sure what it was, and I was very curious to see if the tang, by any chance, was plated. And I think you've already had the chance to see that. It indeed is plated. There's is here some shiny plating. Um, let's see if I can focus. Yeah, so we see the full tang, we see the threaded section. I have to say, it's not as precise, the threading here, as it was on the IOD-89, so... And we maybe have the maker's mark to blame, because I saw... Let me turn the blade around. But on this side, we actually have some letters. There's what seems to be an N and a W, for sure. And then... A, B, I would imagine. So N, W, B, perhaps, or N, W, 3. Not 100% sure, but there's definitely a maker's mark. So we can blame them for the, for the shoddy tang. And also, just to make be sure that this is either some kind of plating or paint, you can see it's um, coming apart. It's starting to flake in some areas here. So it's not, um, it's not just steel color that you're seeing. This is some coating that the blade has. So all in all, I'm sorry for the focus today. It's really weird. Under here, we can still see some active rust is forming. So I think I'll, I'll polish it a little bit and clean it with some oil at some point.
But in the meantime, as usual, we do a quick round of um, reassembling just so we see how easy it is, if indeed it is easy. So we take our um, guard section, we take our grip, and this slides down pretty easily, unlike the uh, IOD89, this kind of fits in place. You just need at the end to push a little, but it, it stays in place quite easily. We can place the cap on and ensure that the guard section is correctly placed within the cap here. There we go. And a simple bit of screwing this button back on and we should be back to a functional sword. So I won't tighten this with the wrench right now because actually uh, I'm going to clean the tang as soon as I finish filming so then I don't have to touch it again. But this is basically, apart from uh, tightening it with the wrench, this is the sword reassembled. So these swords are always a pleasure to take apart. I'm referring specifically to swords that you can easily screw or unscrew the tang on. And while I always thought this was a defect in sword, it was a sign of swords not used so much for fighting or for use because I always considered the thread and to be maybe delicate or potentially come loose. I have to say that I also do see the value of this technique because it enables quick maintenance and quick repairing and quick substituting of any piece that may break on a sword. And let's be honest, when swords were designed for actual use, they probably got damaged pretty quickly and pretty seriously. So ease of maintenance was probably paramount. So anyway, that's just an extra consideration. I'm glad we got to see a few details under the hood of this sword and I hope you'll join me in another video very soon. Thank you for watching and have a great day.